Kingdom is going crazy. Tying run at third, and the winning run is on at first base in King Griffey Jr. And here comes Edgar Martinez. Nobody out for Edgar Martinez. Edgar, the greatest right-handed hitter I've ever seen, was waiting for this. running like a deer. He's just bouncing. He's not really touching the ground. You could have put up four hands, six hands to stop him, hold him up. He wasn't stopping for nothing. And you're just sitting there by the seat of your pants going, come on, please, God, please, God. He's going to try to score. Here's the Dominion Championship. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going. This is MLB's Epic Moments, Saving Seattle. The Seattle Mariners entered the 1995 season with some of the most talented players in all of baseball. They had a dominant ace in Randy Johnson, Strikeout number 11. one of the better pure hitters in Edgar Martinez, Fastball belted. And, that's going to and one of the game's best all-around players, in Ken Griffey Jr. Griffey with the catch. Yet despite the promise, the Mariners had their share of problems. They had yet to reach the postseason. They had trouble drawing fans. And they played in what was possibly the league's least appealing venue. The Kingdom was actually a great stadium for football, but really terrible for baseball. And of course, in the summertime, a lot of uh, folks who uh, relish good warm weather after a, a full winter of dark, dreary, rainy days, really didn't want to be in the Kingdom watching a baseball game. During the 94 season, the Kingdom actually began to fall apart, and this following rumors and threats that the franchise might move to Tampa Bay. We had just lost a vote to get a new stadium and to keep the Mariners in town, and so we're reading real estate and relocators and apartment finders and housing magazines. It was given that we weren't going to be in Seattle anymore. It might have seemed the only way the Mariners could stay in Seattle would be to do the one thing they had never done, play postseason baseball. Even though we had star players on that team, it wasn't enough to keep the team here, and we had to win and get enough people in the stands to keep the club here. But early in the 95 season, that prospect took a hit. At the end of May of 1995, the Mariners are playing the Baltimore Orioles, and Kevin Bass hits a long fly ball deep to right center field at the Kingdom. And Junior, like he always does, makes an incredible catch. Holy mackerel! He is hurt. He may have broken his wrist. Quite frankly, when that happened, I thought, boy, there goes the season. Much like Seattle, the New York Yankees were also suffering through a trying 95 season. They stumbled out of the gate and come September had no chance of winning their division. But fortunately for them, this year had a wild card, giving a postseason berth to the league's best second place team. It really gave an incentive to teams that had no shot of making it into the postseason, but now they have really something to play for. The Yankees hadn't reached the postseason in 13 years, a dry spell that coincided with the tenure of their captain, Don Mattingly a Yankee icon who was in the twilight of his career. I remember watching Don Mattingly prepare for games and the respect he commanded from his teammates uh, without even saying a word. And now he had his team focused on a wild card. Down the stretch, I think Don Mattingly really turned it up a notch. I think he sort of said, I don't care about my back anymore or some of the injury problems he's had. He just started to turn it loose. Mattingly, base hit right field. He was kind of our rallying cry. New York went an incredible 21 and 6 in September, yet still had not clinched the American League's first wildcard berth going into the season's final day. Mattingly rips one down the line and God, a home run for Don Mattingly. The New York Yankees have won the 1995 first ever wildcard. Don Mattingly, 
finally going to the postseason, and he was the man everybody sought out to hug. I know I've said it over the years, I feel like I was going to get there, you know, I always felt that way. And to never give up that feeling, never give up that hope, and, uh, you know, it happens today, it's great. If the Mariners were also going to play October baseball, they too would need a red-hot finish. For on August 15th, they were 12 and a half games behind the division-leading Angels. But that was also the day Ken Griffey Jr. returned to the lineup. When Jr. came back, in the middle of August, it was like the Mariners just traded for the greatest player on the planet. Now Griffey unloads to deep right, the game is over. Immediately steps in and just picks it right up where he left off. He goes yard a couple of times. And he's taking a 96 mile an hour fastball up here and he's tomahawk chopping this thing into the upper deck. Belted deep to right field, upper deck time! And that's when you kind of go, he's back. With Junior looking to make up for lost time, the Mariners went on a scintillating run. Every day there was a new hero. I mean, the, the most unlikely guy was stepping up and getting a big base hit or making a dive and catch or getting a pinch hit home run. A grand slam home run for Vince Coleman. And so it, it became contagious. And sliding around the tag is Admiral. My, oh my. And while the Mariners soared, the Angels began to collapse find yourself being a scoreboard watcher and all of a sudden you're looking up and damn they lost again <laughs> suddenly the kingdom which was a mausoleum for most of the time wound up drawing 56 57 thousand people everybody was there rooting and championing what was happening it was our team and I think that really carried the day Seattle and its fans had embraced a refuse to lose monster as the regular season wore on and sure enough they managed to tie the Angels, setting up a one-game playoff for the AL West title. Please, please, please refuse to lose. The amount of people outside the Kingdom for a one-game playoff was awesome. Big unit! Big unit! <laughs> I think that a lot of us at that point played that game on a lot of adrenaline. And again, we had Randy Johnson. And the big unit came up huge. Six. Capping off a dominant season that saw him go 18 and 2 and earn his first Cy Young Award. That's 11 for the big unit. Most importantly, he pitched Seattle into the postseason for the first time ever. The Seattle Mariners are the champions of the American League West. They never ever gave up. They kept believing in themselves and they made it happen. Refused to lose, they didn't. Season play, first time for the division series. After 14 long years, playoff baseball was finally back in the Bronx. They have a full house here at Yankee Stadium. The Seattle Mariners here to try and quiet them down. It was a chance for the fans to give their beloved team captain his postseason welcome. And they've waited 13 years for Don Mattingly to get this ovation. Here's our guy finally on center stage in postseason. You could really feel the tension. You could feel the uh, anticipation. But Griffey was also playing his first postseason game, and he quickly put his stamp on it. Rips it deep. Goodbye home run hitting the facade of the upper deck at Yankee Stadium. He's got an unbelievable way of making a huge impact in the game when the game needs it. At the most important time, they go, okay, this is my stage. Watch me elevate. Swing and a drive deep to right field. Goodbye, baseball. This ball game is tied at four. Ken Griffey Jr. said, get on my back and I will carry you. But on this night, not even Junior's heroics could spoil the Yankees' opening game party. Sierra D. For the first time since 81, the Yankees in postseason play have won it. You always like to, especially in a five-game series, so you should be able to get the first on your belt. But, uh, you know, a long way to go. Another capacity crowd at Yankee Stadium, ready to go. And in game two, Mattingly did his best to keep the momentum on the side of the men in pinstripes. This one by Mattingly. that home run in game two, 
the upper deck was shaking at Yankee Stadium, at the old stadium. You could see it bouncing up and down. And I remember looking at Buck Showalter, the manager, going, is that thing going to fall? I've heard a lot of crowds that were loud. I've heard a lot of great moments in Yankee Stadium. But when he hit a home run in that playoff, that place lit up. That was his time to taste what the playoffs were all about. Mattingly's home run had given New York the lead. But Seattle responded in kind. And a postseason classic continued to unfold. goes into extra innings, and the game is going and going and going. 12th inning, Junior hits a home run. Home run, he has done it again! Incredibly, for the second straight night, Griffey sought to play the role of hero. And for the second straight night, he was denied. Ruben Sierra trying to at least get this game tied up here in the 12th inning. Swung on, left field. This showdown had become a game of big moments, and few were bigger than what took place in the bottom of the 15th, courtesy of Jim Lavins. Maybe, it could be, back at the wall. Goodbye, home run, the Yankees win. Jim Lavins, a two-run homer in the 15th inning. Yankees win seven to five. I was just looking for a pitch to drive, and fortunately he got up in the zone, and. Uh, you know, when I saw the ball go to the fence, I was just elated, exhausted, everything. It was, it was a great feeling. Get a shower the great there, <laughs> we got to get on a plane, don't we? <laughs> we had the long flight back home to Seattle. The plane is pitch black, and it's real quiet, obviously. Lou Pinelli looked me in the eyes. He said, Rick, we're going to win this thing. The 1995 ALDS moved to Seattle with the Mariners down two games to none. But they knew they'd have their raucous crowd behind them. You talk about loud. I, I remember being out in the outfield going, holy crap, I couldn't hear the buzzing in my ear after a while. It was so loud. They also had Randy Johnson on the mound. Swing! And she's striking out. Here comes Mr. Snappy. Strike three call. They got him looking. He's got that dominating appearance on the mound. He's got that dominating fastball. He's got it. He's got that strikeout breaking ball. He got you with a beautiful breaking ball. Boy, when he's going on all cylinders, uh, you know very quickly. And, and that ball game there, he was cooking. The old two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. He did it. By leading Seattle to the game three victory, Johnson both rewarded the fans and inspired his teammates. You're down 0-2, and you win a game, now it's 2-1, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, you never know what can happen. But the Yankees jumped out to a commanding early game four lead. Put it on the scoreboard! And Seattle's dream season was in dire straits. Paul O'Neill makes it 5 nothing. But true to their rallying cry, the Mariners would refuse to lose. Then, with the bases loaded and the score tied in the eighth, Martinez, the American League batting champion, sought to finish what he had started. I could still see the flight of the ball, and that white ball just went right into that blue tarp. I don't believe it! My, oh my! And it sent a ripple of emotion throughout the kingdom that went just absolutely nuts. Get out the right red in the mustard this time, Grandma! It is a grand salami! Powered by Edgar's seven RBIs, the Mariners had evened the series at two, with one game left to play. It's for all or nothing tomorrow, man. One team's going to be a ghost, and hopefully it's not going to be us. I don't think you have to worry about guys showing up ready to play and not leaving their guts on the field. There's no doubt about it from either side. With the specter of baseball leaving Seattle, it was time for the winner-take-all Game 5 
of the 95 ALDS, and the Mariners owned the momentum. The pressure now is on the Yankees. They were up two games to nothing, and I think that's exactly the way we felt about it. Felt pretty good about our situation, especially because we were playing at home in the Kingdom. But if the pressure was on the Yankees, they did have the big game pitcher who could handle it in David Cohn. And early on in game five, he lived up to that billing. And he got him. And in the biggest game in the first postseason of his career, Don Mattingly did his best to make game five just the beginning of the journey. Slaps one into left field, down into that corner. It's fair. The Yankees will score. It's a ground rule double. Don Mattingly scores Williams and O'Neill, and the Yankees jump up 4-2. It was now up to the tiring Cone to hold the lead. Oh, swung a bad one. Helped Cone out his second strikeout here in a row. You can see that I was really kind of nibbling around the corners. Certainly, I was exhausted. Struck him out. I didn't care about the pitch count back then. I would have thrown 190 pitches to win if needed. But in the bottom of the eighth, Griffey did what he did best. Deep to right field. Oh, baby. Put it on the scoreboard to get it done again. That is the fifth home run of this series for Griffey. It ties the record for the most in any postseason series. But Seattle wasn't finished. Now trailing four to three, the Mariners loaded the bases with two out, and an exhausted Cone delivered his 147th and final pitch. And the Nerds were tied. The walk to Strange forces in young Alex Rodriguez. Refused to lose in Seattle. I felt completely devastated completely exhausted having thrown ball four. What a courageous effort by David Cohn. I remember marching right to the clubhouse and burying my head in a towel and crying like I was 12 years old. With game five now tied at four, the Mariners had new life and an intimidating arm in the pen. I would see him out there warming up and I would say, well, he's, he's coming back again? You know, he's <laughs> like, they were like, clear. He made it clear that no matter what was going on, this might be our last hurrah. He was going to make darn sure he was going to put an end to things. Both Johnson and Jack McDowell, the Game 3 starters, took matters into extra innings. Got him. And in this high-stakes game, it was surprisingly Johnson and the Mariners who blinked first. Base hit. Kelly coming around. He's going to score. Yankees lead it now. Now in the bottom of the 11th, just three outs from elimination. The Mariners refused to lose Mantra, would be put to the ultimate test. There's that bunt. And Mattingly again, he makes the bunt, and he didn't get it. The Mariners have the winning one at the plate in junior. Get on the ground, makes it. Kingdom is going crazy. The tie and run at third, and the winning run is on at first base in King Griffey Jr. And here comes Edgar Martinez. The most seminal moment in Seattle's baseball history was about to unfold. I felt confident that we absolutely have the best guy standing at home plate, and the Yankees are in a bit of trouble. Edgar, the greatest right-handed hitter I've ever seen, was waiting for this. You could have put up four hands, six hands to stop him, hold him up. He wasn't stopping for nothing. He's just running like a deer. He's just bouncing. He's not really touching the ground. To see him flying, and, and you're just sitting there by the seat of your pants going, come on, please, God, please, God. Junior came sliding across home plate, the cloud of dust, the pile of humanity on the field, and the Mariners get to the American League Championship Series on the biggest hit in franchise history the double down the left field line by Edgar Martinez. Still got goosebumps. Unbelievable, you guys 
just don't say die. We're just out here trying to do the best job we can at home. And we finally paid, finally paid off for it. Then Edgar hit the double, boy. To see the eruption and to see the energy, it was the most exciting time that I can name as mayor of the city of Seattle. What a serious him and, and the whole team had, but Edgar particularly and Junior, man, these guys, uh, they came ready to play. They must have ate their Wheaties or something, man. On the heels of this epic moment, the Washington State Legislature set money aside to help build a new baseball park in Seattle. That was the hit, the run, the game, and the season that saved baseball in Seattle. This has been a series that Mariner fans are going to be talking about for the ages. It was a magical time, a magical time that really enabled this community to understand the value of the Mariners. And as a result of that, we actually have a better stadium than we ever could have dreamed.